Now, this lacrimal apparatus concerned with secretion and drainage of lacrimal fluid. The component parts are lacrimal glands and its duct. Second part is conjunctival sac. Here it is conjunctival sac. This one is the parotid, oh sorry, I'm sorry, lacrimal gland. And the third part is puncta and lacrimal canaliculi. Here it is. And the fourth part is lacrimal sac, this one. And the fifth part is naso lacrimal gland. Here it is. Now, if you look at this uh, lacrimal gland, this lacrimal gland, as the name indicates, it secretes lacrimal fluid. You may call it as tear. Lacrimal fluid and the tear one and the same thing. And this lacrimal gland having two parts, orbital part and the palpebral part. Orbital part lies in lacrimal fossa and this lacrimal fossa is situated also the anterior superior part of orbital cavity and the palpebral part as the name indicates lies in lateral part of upper eyelid and these two parts they continue with each other along the lateral margin of levator palpebri superioris muscle. Now this gland secretes lacrimal fluid and number of ducts arising from this lacrimal gland these green colors line is representing lacrimal duct and these ducts they get opened into the lateral part of superior fornix. Now lacrimal fluid serves many functions. A very important role of this lacrimal fluid is to keep cornea moist and clean. Now another one it kills bacteria so it has bactericidal effect and the Another very important role that it provides nutrition to the cornea. And another one, one more function is there, the emotional expression by shedding tears. So number of functions are there of this gland, lacrimal gland. And uh, this lacrimal gland is supplied by lacrimal nerve, which is sensory to the gland, apart from the sensory supply, it has got secretomotor pathway. Here it is, secretomotor path of lacrimal gland. What is important, that the preganglionic fibers arising from lacrimatory nucleus. And this nucleus is situated in the pons. We will discuss details about the pons afterwards. And from this, the preganglionic fibers, after arising from lacrimatory nucleus, it joins sensory root of facial nerve and the sensory root of facial nerve is also called as nervous intermediates and this then, then the fibers joins geniculate ganglia from geniculate ganglia the fibers are running in greater petrosal nerve greater petrosal nerve after joining greater petrosal nerve the, the nerve uh, the fibers passes to the nerve to pterygoid canal and the nerve to pterygoid canal ultimately reach to the pterygopalatine ganglion. As we know, this ganglion is situated in fossa of same name, pterygopalatine fossa. And here, the preganglionic fibers relay. It ends, and the postganglionic fibers arises, and these postganglionic fibers joins maxillary nerve, and from maxillary nerve to its branch, gyromatico temporal nerve, and from this nerve, a branch. Lacrimal nerve uh, is a branch from gyromatico temporal. They join the fibers, joins lacrimal nerve, and this lacrimal through lacrimal nerve, the secretomotor fibers reaches to the lacrimal gland. So, lacrimal nerve is sensory as well as carries secretomotor fibers for lacrimal gland. Now, look at this diagram. Here is the lacrimal gland and this orbital part, as we know, orbital part lies in the orbital cavity, anterior superior part of orbital cavity having lacrimal fossa, and this fossa lodges uh, orbital part of lacrimal gland, and it's somewhat almond shaped. And this one, the small portion, is palpebral part of lacrimal gland, which lies deep to the lateral part of this muscle. This muscle is 
levator parietally superior muscle now these two part as we know is continued with each other i am making this flow around this lateral border of levator parietally superioris so the gland secretes lacrimal fluid and by means of these ducts ducts 12 to 15 in number and these ducts they are they are opening into the lateral part of superior body so lacrimal fluid from lacrimal gland through duct enters into the superior fornix lateral part and then but it flows through conjunctival side the whole is conjunctival side and then it runs from lateral to medial side towards lacus lacrimalis this triangular area is called lacus lacrimalis triangular area at the medial angle of i so here the puncta the two puncta these are opening minor to opening is situated at the junction of lateral 5 6 and medial 1 6 of leg margin and from this the lacrimal canaliculi begins the see the superior lacrimal canaliculi i am going to describe initially running upwards and then downwards to join lacrimal sac same is over here the inferior lacrimal canaliculi begins from the puncta and initially running downwards and then horizontally to get open into the lacrimal sac and this uh, the length of lacrimal canal canaliculi approximately 10 now this uh, lacrimal canal canaliculi as we know is opening into this lacrimal sac lacrimal sac is a membranous sac which is situated in lacrimal fossa of orbit and the, the fossa is formed by lacrimal bone and frontal process of maxilla uh, the sac uh, about 12 mm in length and then below it continues with naso lacrimal duct now the sac is situated just behind medial palpebral ligament now look at this naso lacrimal duct the naso lacrimal duct continue below and get open into the what is called as inferior meatus of nasal cavity and uh, it begins right from the lower end of lacrimal sac and the length of this naso lacrimal duct is about 18 mm and this naso lacrimal duct lies in naso lacrimal canal so if you concentrate over here it is very obvious the 18 mm length and it begins at lower end it begins as a continuation of lower end of lacrimal sac and the lower opening is in the nasal cavity at inferior nasal meatus now just above the opening a small fold fold of mucous membrane which acts as a valve and prevents entry of air into the eye and this is called as hazel's valve here it is the pink color hazel's valve